In this presentation, we're going to look at two more tools that will further enhance your production efficiency in Maya 2013. We're going to look at the Animation Transfer tool, the Atom Animation Transfer tool, as well as the ability for tracks to do clip matching. Atom now allows artists to transfer animation data between characters via the new Atom offline file format. It's another element of the new Open Data initiative at Autodesk. Atom natively supports keyframes, constraints, animation layers, set-driven keys. It enables artists to more easily repurpose existing animation data as new characters are created. So in this scene, I've got a custom rig with some animation data on it that I want to send out in the Atom file format to use in another scene or another version of this, of this girl. So the first thing that we're going to do is use a template to help us along the process. So let's just jump into the outline and grab all the nodes that I want to have exported out to the Atom file. So it's basically all the handles and all the controls in this custom rig. And we'll go ahead and we'll create an Atom template. So we'll just save this out as girl.template. Make sure we're in our local directory, which we are. Which is pretty straightforward. And what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and we'll apply that out. So now all of those nodes basically have been set out to this new girl.template. Notice that we have the ability to create views. And what views really are are a filtering mechanism. So if I wanted to send out maybe only the animation for the arms or the head, I could create a specific view to do that. So let's go ahead and just grab the neck and the head. We'll create a new view and we'll call it head. And we'll just write that into that same girl.template file. So we'll apply that. And yes, we want to push the information into it. The next thing that we're going to do is create another view for the arm. So we'll grab the controls for the shoulders, the pole vectors on the elbows, as well as the IK handles on the hands and we'll call this one arm. So we'll go ahead and we'll apply that. So now that we've done that, we're ready to send this character out into the Atom file. The first thing that I want to do before we get there is just go ahead and add an animation layer onto this. So let's just go and create a new animation mm -hmm. layer of our girl. We'll kind of set a bounding key at the front and end of that animation and we'll make her do a pretty drastic drop as she walks down so that you can really clearly see that, that animation layer come across in the Atom file. So there she goes. She kind of does that little weird drop in the middle of that. So let's go ahead and export this animation out. So in this example, we're going to call, just make sure we're going to our local directory, call it walk. We'll overwrite that file. So one thing that's important to look at here is we're going to send out animation layers as well as static values. So if I had that control, that global offset, maybe positioning my character somewhere and I didn't keyframe it, the static values will come across. We'll go ahead and we'll use a template file that's already set up here, girl.template. Notice that in the views, I could go ahead and use this to filter the animation data out. Now, really what I'm going to do in this example is I'm going to write everything out that we originally set in that template file. I'm not trying to filter it. I'd rather have all the information in the template file because I also have the ability to use the view on the import. So we can filter data both on the export as well as the import of the animation that's stored into the Atom offline file. So let's go ahead and we'll just apply that. It takes just a second to send it out. We can close this down and jump over to another version of Maya here. So in this scene, obviously we don't have any animation data on our character and we want to use Atom to go ahead and get that data on it. So we'll go ahead and we'll grab a node. We'll say import animation from Atom. So again, we're going to use the walk file that we just saved out. Let's go ahead and open that guy up. We're going to make sure that we're using that same girl.template. So we'll open that up. Notice in the views we have the ability to filter it. So let's go ahead and just filter it onto the arms for this. So we're going to grab the time range from it. It's worth mentioning that you have different match methods. So we could use um, search and replace with a string as well as a map file. So that allows you to have more than one search and replace field. So it's just a simple text file that allows you to, to repurpose this data onto maybe rigs that have slightly dissimilar names. So we'll go ahead and we'll apply that information. We'll bring it in. and. Just like that, we now have only animation on the arms because we used that view to filter out that information. Now we could do the same thing on the head. Obviously, if we apply that and now scrub through this, oops, let's go ahead and grab a node on that guy and apply it. So now we have animation on the arms and the head. And then obviously, if I turn off the filtering, we're going to get the full rig, everything of our character kind of walking through the scene here doing that drop because again we transferred this over with that animation layer so you can see there's that animation layer right there and as I scrub through this she sort of does that drop down and then she just kind of continues along so that is the Atom animation file transfer tool the next thing that we're going to be looking at is the ability for tracks to do some really nice clip matching with tracks clip matching artists can now more easily visualize how motions within two or more track clips match in order to adjust how they blend together Clip Ghost enable animators to view the start and end frames of clips as skeleton wireframes in a 3D view. 
Clips can be manually matched with the help of these visual cues or automatically matched using a choice of options for translation or rotation. So we've already got some animation on this character um, from the last demo, and what we want to do is turn it into a simple tracks clip. So we'll go ahead and we'll grab that node, jump into tracks, and create the clip. So we've got our first clip in the scene. Let's go ahead and get another piece of animation to begin working with. We'll just use a, a clip from the library. And what we have is the girl sort of moving forward and trying to climb into uh, the vehicle. So let's just get that car kind of offset where she's actually sort of getting close to it. So let's just push that vehicle up there somewhere like that. And what we need to do is we need to obviously deal with these differences in world position. And this is really what the tracks clips were designed to handle. So the first thing when working with the tracks clip is setting up the options for what we're going to ghost with as well as what we're going to use for our offset object to deal with these differences in world space. So let's just grab this root node and specify that as our offset object. So we'll just say edit, set offset object. It goes through and sets it for both clips at the same time. Let's go ahead and make sure that we have our ghosting turned on, our clip ghosting turned on. And the next thing that we're going to do is just go ahead and specify what part of the skeleton that we want to use for our clip ghost. And we can turn off that control rig. We don't need to see that right now. So let's go ahead and grab our, um, our joints and turn off that depth of field. We'll just grab that node right there. And with that node highlighted, what we're going to do is we're going to say this is now what we want to use as our clip ghost root. So we'll just do that. And all we have to do is, oops, let's do that one more time. Looks like I didn't get it. So we'll say clip ghost root and turn on that clip ghost. So the clip ghosts, again, show us our first and last frame of every clip. And we can use these clip ghosts actually as positioning objects to get these transition effects to basically line up. So what we'll do is we'll grab this first clip ghost, and you can see as I grab that, that's now what I'm using to actually position where that clip lives in world space. So obviously for this guy, we've got to go ahead and spin it around 90 degrees so that it sort of at least gets in the general vicinity of, of lining up here. And I'm just using the manual process of lining these up. I could obviously grab a body part and say match to this part, but for this example, it actually works out pretty good. And you can see that there's a little bit of difference between the start and end frame of these guys. So even if we put a transition effect between these, it's not going to exactly line up. Like even if we just do a, a kind of a butt blend, it still has that little pop there. So what I want to do is I want to use some transition to kind of blend between these guys. And we'll just let them blend maybe, you know, something like, we'll let them blend a good bit actually because their, their, their change was a little bit different. So when you start to set that up, obviously now we need to grab our first clip ghost and if it's blending over a range of 50 frames, that first clip ghost really needs to be somewhere probably, probably about like that. And all you have to do is sit here and play around with this until you get the slipping to stop. And that looks pretty good actually. So now she kind of comes forward and looks like we need to just grab this door and offset where that uh, where that hand comes out and grabs it and starts to pull it back. So right about there is really where we want to have that door opening. And again, this is a referenced object, but we have the ability to um, edit the function curves on referenced objects now. So that's something that's been newly added to this release, and it really helps a lot if you've got file referencing and animation on it. The ability to, to, to work with that data is really really pretty cool. So that's really what tracks clip matching is all about. Again, we get that nice visual representation of our first and last frame, and the ability to blend between those guys is much easier than it used to be. So those are a couple of the new features that will really increase your productivity with Maya 2013, the Atom tool for doing animation transfer, as well as the tracks clip matching tool that allows you to deal with these differences in world space when you're blending between multiple clips inside of tracks.